You good, George? All right, it's seven o'clock, so we'll get started. The, um, I'd like to welcome everyone to the January 2024 ZBA meeting. Norman, you want to do roll call? Kevin Here. Marshall Here. Here. Alan Seeley? Here. Zach Murphy? Here. He'll be sitting in for Marcy this evening. Uh, please rise for the pledge. Everyone, just please make note of the uh, emergency exits to behind you, and then there's behind these walls here. All right, we have some administrative uh, things to take care of. First on the agenda is um, the appointment of the ZBA attorney. I'm torn, I'm torn on this one. <laughs> torn, I tell you. I'd like to... Um, uh, to make a motion that the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Monroe hereby makes a motion to appoint Ferrick, Nugent, and McCarthy as counsel for the ZBA with David McCartney as our primary counsel for their term ending December 31, 2024. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And then um, I'd like to uh, make a motion to appoint the assistant chair, and I would like to um, to continue to have Steve Thaw be the assistant uh, chair. Anyone second that? Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, let's move on to the uh, current returning public hearing would be the town of Monroe. I don't see anyone from the town. Is there anyone uh, in the audience that has any comments or questions on that project? I don't see any, anyone there. So I, uh, at this point, I think we've heard uh, quite a bit going back a, a few uh, meetings. So if there's no one here tonight, this has been open for quite a while. I, I would like to make a motion to go ahead and close the public hearing. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I believe days to under a decision? Yes, that's right. Am I doing that right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's right. 62 days. Yeah, I, I think that we're going to need those, those um, that time uh, to really gather all the information that we've gotten to this point to to go ahead and forward on that. If, if there's anyone on the board that, that thinks differently, um, willing to hear any in all comments? No? All right. All right, so uh, moving on, we have a new public hearing. Uh, Chris Robinson. Step up. How you doing? Hey, your name, please. Turn, turn on the mic. Button on the, button on the side. 
And also before we start, um, we have all the proof of postings and mailings in, yeah. and so you should, uh, uh, it would be appropriate to entertain a motion to open the public yeah, hearing. That would, that would help, huh? That's, good. That's crazy talk. <laughs> <laughs> Call me a stickler for procedure. Yeah, you know. Like to make a motion to uh, open the public hearing. I'll second a motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Chris? Yes, Chris Robinson. Okay. Chris, I know um, from, from the last time here with the packet that we have, looks like we're looking at a, a lot area coverage variance, yes. correct? Yes. And a... Um, also, uh, would you have a front yard and a, a side yard? Um, those were pre pre existing. Yes. Right. Yeah, the, yeah, the lot area, front yard, and side yard are pre existing, yep. and then the the it was unclear to me the lot coverage. Um, maybe you could just give the board an overview since the, the public hearing is now open. Sure. Give the, yeah, I know we got a little bit of information from you at the last meeting. Sure. So um, the only discrepancy that I was aware of is uh, an encroachment of the setback rules. Um, I did get a permit uh, for the pool. And uh, just due to some hardships, uh, just due to the nature of the property and the, and the ledge, uh, due to the mountainous area, um, I'm, I'm encroaching on um, the rear uh, property, which is uh, Palisade State Park. Uh, by a few feet, it's uh, three and a half feet. Um, but I was able to maintain, um, you know, the setbacks uh, for the side neighbors, and uh, that that was pretty much it. Um, wasn't intended, uh, but like I said, just due to some hardships with the ledge um, and excavation, I just couldn't get the pool um, any closer. Sure, you got it. In my notes, I have the pool is eight eight point three feet off, and it should be fifteen. Am I, am I am I incorrect on that? No, you're correct. Right. Yeah. And so, what the permit originally had it at a different distance, and you had to move it closer due to site conditions. Is that yes. what happened? Yes. Yes. And well, uh, what, what did it originally? It, was it originally fully compliant? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, it worked out great on paper. Um, I just squeezed it in there, and you know, when it came to the real world, um, that's what ended up happening. Um, I thought I was a lot closer. I thought I was only like a foot or two off, but when we came and had the survey redone, um, it was a little bit further. Seven feet, right? Yeah. Um, but like I said, it's, uh, you know, the back um, is, uh, you know, just all state park. You know, it's woods for miles. Um, And I, I know we just went over, but the, the lot area coverage was pre-existing. It has nothing to do um, with the pool. Right. The pool didn't have any any influence on your coverage. No. Okay. Um, the, the Palisades Park is right there at, at a bunch of your property. Yes. So did we? Uh, was there a GML review sent out to the county planning? Yeah, okay. But I thought uh, we asked that last meeting, right? I think, I think we did talk about that, but I'm not sure if, it, if we had the answer on that, but it was brought up. Any, any other um, comments from the board as they as they reviewed this? They see anything out of the ordinary? It's uh, the the copy of the surveys there. It's pretty it's pretty cut and dry. Back, you you see anything anything that we might have missed? No, unless we need to get a hold of, like you said, the Palisades to see yeah. how they kind of feel about this. Yeah, nor nor we will find. will will let us know about that. Everything else seems All right. Yep. 
All right, Chris, thank, thank you very much. Appreciate, appreciate it there. Is, um, is there anyone else in the, uh, out there that would like to make a comment or have an opinion on, on this property? Please, come on. Please, step up. You can use the podium. I'm sorry, if you could just state, turn, your, turn state your name. It. Got it. Yeah, I'm Chris's next door neighbor. I'm to the left of his property, and I have no objection to uh, his request for the variance. Your name? My name's Timothy Casey, 220 First Avenue, Monroe, New York. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody, anyone else? All right. If there's no other no other comments from the public, I uh, we're going to have to keep this open um, to find out about the the parks. Yeah, let's get to the bottom of that right away. Because if if it was not referred, let's refer it immediately tomorrow so that we have 30 days. You know, um, I don't know. I can't, you know, I haven't looked at the calendar next month. We have 30 days between now and next month's meeting. Hopefully. We should be fine. Letter signed. I just said we know by that letter. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't know if we had signed. I know that they were sending them out to different places in yeah, Orange we County. Did, Town of Monroe did sign that. <clears throat> so I know okay. there's a lot of projects that don't have. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't have to go to the county now, but I'm not sure about the one with the park. I know, and and that, um, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll, let's check on that. And it's definitely all. It's all the boards. It's the it's the town board, the planning board, and the zoning board that are all signatories to that mm -hmm. and governed by that. Okay, that's good. That's helpful. Okay. Uh, you know, you sh it's you should make a motion to uh, to continue it on that date, on the twenty seventh. I'd like to make a uh, a motion to continue this public hearing on February twenty seventh. Yes. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Yes. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Okay. You all appreciate Thank it. You. You can leave it on. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. It, it was on and the board, no, nobody was here, so the board just closed the public hearing. Public hearing. Okay. And right, so they're not, uh, as far as the You know, I, I, I was surprised that they weren't here, or, or that you weren't here, but yeah. now you are, but either way, you know, I thought the board's not going to take any further, certainly not taking action on it tonight. Okay. Right. Yeah. And um, I guess I would ask, uh, do we have a group here? Uh, can, you, can you come can up you to the mic, please? Step up to the mic, step to the podium. Mic on. One more time. There, there we go. You go. Uh, if the planning board does appear after I leave, would the board be willing to accept uh, written comments for another maybe 10 days or so? I just want to have a chance to. Uh... No, yeah, no, that, that, that's a that's a fair point. If you wanted to keep it open to receive written comments from both sides, you know, you could you could adjust that. No, nobody has come in or out from the planning board. Anybody in between, you could do that. Um, Certainly, the public hearing being closed, and you know, it wouldn't be reopened for to hear anything tonight if you're not here. Right, there wouldn't be that. That would not happen. There wouldn't be any comment. You know, if no. she came in, we'd just tell her it's closed. Just it's, like 
Yeah, it's close. Did, did you have something that you were looking to submit tonight anyway, or no. are you just talking about rebuttal in case they do? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I just, I, 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 we could, but I'm just not going to listen to them anyhow. We're just going to shut them down. It's done. So hey, my time is as valuable as your time. Okay. Yeah. Right? I, I have no Cer problem with certainly, that. if they're, if, if for some reason they're given an opportunity, you, it will be an opportunity for all. Right. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Certainly. That. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Yep, thank, thank you. you. But they won't. Yeah. All right, next up, Weiss. No one here for Weiss? All right, moving on. So, so real quick, just with that, that was, it was notice for a public hearing for tonight? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would suggest you open, open the public it. hearing. That way it doesn't have to be re-noticed. Okay. You can open it and then uh, make a motion to yeah, continue carry. it on right. uh, the February 27th meeting. All right, I'd like to make a motion uh, to open up the uh, public hearing for Weiss. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> and then since there's no one here, I'll make a motion to uh, have the public hearing remain open for the February 27th meeting. Second that again. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next up for uh, the new public hearing will be Hernandez. I'd like to, uh, to make a motion to open a public hearing. For I'll second. Okay. I'll second a motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 How are you doing tonight? Good. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members. My name is Dan Castricone. I'm attorney for the Hernandez. Good evening. My name's Richard Hernandez. We have the so this is uh, the, since the uh, public hearing is, is just open, and if I remember correctly, um, we were there was a lot area coverage uh, variance with a pool. No, not so much for a pool. It was no. pavers. Pavers? Yeah. Oh, pavers, we followed yeah. the, uh, they made an application with the, uh, with the planning board, followed the plan, and are trying to sell their home. And uh, it popped up that they were 7% over on the coverage with the pavers. We have the proof of the mailing here. Should I bring it up to you, Mr. Chairman, or to Maureen? Yeah, so your, your coverage went from 25% uh, to 31.5%? Yes. Correct? That's correct. Yeah. And just so I understand it, you're saying that, that there was an approved plan by the planning board just as is, and it just it was never picked up that it was the exact. It was built as planned. As planned. But it's just over. So yeah. now you're looking for the relief formally to help with the sale. Exactly. Any any questions or comments from the uh, from the board? I apologize. I don't know why I had pool written down there. Well, it's a patio around a pool. Yeah. Hey, right. There you go. <laughs> Not the pool. That'll do it. That'll, that'll work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what uh, if you don't want just for my notes? When was that planning board approval? You were... Approximately. How long? Ago? About three years three ago. Years. If there's no no other comments or uh, questions from the board, appreciate your time. And if there's anyone out there that has any comments on this project or any concerns, questions, now is the time to step forward.
Well, there's no one, no one coming up, no other questions. This is, uh, in my opinion, this is just a very simple, simple project here. I, I, I don't know, I feel like we can make a determination here tonight, unless you're all, yeah, before we get to that, I just want to know, is there, you got, anyone disagree with that? No? Oh. Yeah. All right, so um, do we have to close the meeting before we read the five factors? Yeah, you should, uh, I mean, you could do it either way, yeah. honestly, but when you vote, you should vote only after. It's closed? Uh, it's closed, yeah. All right, so I'll make a motion to go ahead and close the public hearing on this project. I'll second a motion. Will that in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Dave, you, do you have the, the five factors you could read to us there, would you please? Yeah, just to guide you through it. Yep. Uh, as everybody knows, it's a balancing test weighing the benefit to the applicant against any detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the community, guided by five factors. The first one is whether there be an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties caused by the grant of the area variance? I would say no. No? Anyone? No. All right. Uh, the second is whether there is a feasible alternative uh, to achieve the benefit sought without the granting of an area variance? Again, I would say no. Yeah, considering how this came about. Right. No. Right. Next is whether it's substantial? No. no. Uh, next is whether there'd be an adverse effect or impact on the environmental conditions in the neighborhood? No. And then last is whether it's self-created? Not really. No. Yeah, no. I mean, this was given by the planning board. Yep. All right, with that, with that there, uh, I'd like to, to make a motion to, uh, to approve their application. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And if you could entertain a motion to uh, direct council to prepare a resolution uh, to that effect and authorize the chairman to sign it if it's consistent with what's occurred here tonight. I make a resolution for the attorney to draft a resolution regarding our voting and to be approved by the chairman. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Chairman, Appreciate members, thank you very thank much. You. Good luck. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Good night. These days are going to make a Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what he said. What he said. <laughs> We're going to have it right there. In the future, you could say I adopt that motion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You know. That would take the fun out of it, though. It would. It really would. <laughs> take that moment of anxiety. Of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, here we go. All righty. Next, uh, let me oh, see, because I, I have to go to my revised uh, agenda. So I'm flip-flopping in between two. Actually, three, <laughs> but I don't want to talk about it. All righty. Still seem to be on pace. <laughs> Alrighty, new project coming before us, uh, the Georges. <clears throat> How you doing? Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, doing fine, thanks for asking. I hope you all are doing well tonight as well. My name is, for the record, Michael Morgante, and I am the engineer for this application that's before this board. So what do, you, what do you got for us? Um, so it, it's typical for this area uh, in the town of Monroe, we have um, uh, lots of private roads, roads that haven't been dedicated to uh, the town at this point. Um, so the applicant uh, submitted a building permit uh, for a residential site plan. And as we had expected, we were denied for a 280A variance because um, this particular parcel as all the others in this area, again, do not have frontage on a on a town road. So what we're seeking uh, before this board is uh, relief from that requirement of a 280A.
So for the board members, and we, we haven't we haven't addressed too many 280A variances, no. but does anybody have any questions about that process? What what it is that's going on here? I, I don't. Was there also? I'll admit I I got this one late today. As as did I. Yeah. So I, and I try I try to be as prepared as I can. Some say I make notes on my. Uh, my agendas and then they get switched up. I don't want to talk about it right now though. <laughs> so was there, <laughs> yes, was there, was, so I see that the, um, the frontage, but also is there uh, no tree plan? Is that, is that something that needs to be addressed by us there? I, I don't think th that that's a variance issue. That's just a, a building permit issue that uh, okay. Ben appears to have noted that he can't issue the permit until that's Alrighty. submitted, and I'm sure that'll be submitted as part yeah. of that. I don't think that's before this board right All now, right? right? That is 100% correct. Great. Yes. Thanks for the clarification. Uh, so, I mean, I can give a quick yeah, please. presentation to the board. I yeah. mean, if, if you all want to uh, go to page three or five, I mean, we could start on page uh, two. We'll take a look at the existing conditions. I mean, so the site is um, essentially vacant at this point. Um, uh, if you look in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a uh, north arrow there so that we can get our bearings. Um, <clears throat> you have St. George's Avenue. Uh, I'm sorry. He's on page, page two. Page two? Page two. Correct. Thank you. So again, uh, on page two, upper left-hand corner, just so we can all get our bearings, is a north arrow. Uh, and what you're looking at essentially in the center of the page is tax lot 13-3-28. Uh, it's just shy of one acre, it's 0 0.98 acres. Uh, this particular parcel has frontage on both Prospect Street um, and St. George's, uh, Prospect Street being to the west and uh, St. George's being to the east. Um, it's got a pretty, gently rolling topography. Um, there's nothing essentially very steep in this particular area, at least not on this lot. And what we've done is we've located all the adjacent parcels as well um, that also have frontage on Prospect Street uh, located to the south. Um, <clears throat> if you go to page three, you'll see that we are in the SR15 zoning district. Bulk zoning table is in the upper right-hand corner. Um, essentially, we meet all of the. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, all here. I was thinking that as you were speaking myself. So again, we're in the SR15 zoning district. Uh, again, we meet all the bulk zoning requirements. It's uh, essentially just not having frontage on a town road for the 280A variance. Um, and if you look again at the same parcel, you'll get an idea for the location where we are, are placing the dwelling, which is um, essentially in the southeastern portion of the uh, subject parcel with a driveway that would have access onto uh, St. George's Avenue. So that's just a, a site plan, and it'll give you an idea of how um, you know, it meets the requirements of the town zoning code. Um, from there, if we move to page four, Uh, you, you will see uh, a little bit of engineering there. You'll see a grading plan. Are you hooking up to um, town water? You have a. We are proposing. Septic? We are proposing a well, which is located roughly in the center. I, of the I meant uh, sewer. The idea would be to connect to, uh, yes, the okay. sewer yeah. district. Now I see the well. Yep. Uh, so we, we are showing a sewer connection. Um, if you look at the um, bottom right-hand corner of the proposed dwelling, you'll see a line there with an S in it. That would be our sewer connection location. 
uh, we've graded the driveway such that we can get into the uh, dwelling. I mean, I think it's kind of important to uh, at least give the uh, ZBA an indication that you're not approving a project that cannot be built. Um, so in this case, we have no issue building this particular project. So again, we'd have a proposed well, we would have a sewer connection, uh, we would have a driveway access off of St. George's with a, a single family dwelling, uh, four bedrooms, as noted there. Uh, we've given an approximate um, uh, square footage for that particular dwelling's footprint, which is uh, 1,500 square feet. Um, I, I don't think the ZBA will be interested, but sheet five is just standard construction details for the project. Um, nothing really for you to review. I just figured I would um, mention what that sheet um, contains. So that's, that's a general overview um, of the project. Uh, I'd be glad to entertain any questions or concerns the board might have. So I see, I see, I think on page two, which is pretty much the, the topo portion of it, you've got um, running from west to east type, if you want to call it, about a 40, am I seeing that right? About a 40 foot elevation difference? Change. Between, change in grade? Uh, yeah, so in the northern corner, it looks like we're approximately 835. Right. And it looks like in the like a 789 southern, yeah, somewhere around 785 yeah. actually. Yeah, 70. So 785 yeah. to um, 835. You're looking almost eight, actually 50 feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, keep in mind that that property length is th almost 367 feet. Say that again. The length from one end, from the front of the property to the rear of the yes. property is almost 367 yeah. feet. Right. So, um, yeah, it's a long, narrow it's lot. It's a long, narrow yep. lot, correct. I mean, the impervious surface that we're proposing here is very minimal, um, just the dwelling and the uh, residential driveway um, for a lot that size. Right, right. I know typically the issues that you're looking at with a 2ADA are the nature and quality of the and safety of the road that they're attaching to and where it leads to and how to get to you know where, where's the next thoroughfare and what's going on with emergency vehicle access and so on so um yeah what would you have anything on that mr Morgan? has anybody made a site comment I, I, site I, visit i haven't i have not either uh, this i can't tell you how many of these i've done actually in the town of monroe six seven eight somewhere in that range i've not done one with any person though that's on this current ZBA. So what I can tell you I've done in the past is essentially what we've done is we've had to improve that section of the road um, that we are connecting to, which this applicant is more than willing to do. Um, and at some point what I've done is uh, provided for some type of emergency services turnaround. Um, we can't be turning around on a gravel road. So uh, I've done situations where if we have the room within St. George's Avenue, now we have St. George's and Hilltop, um, we could pave a portion of that and create a, like a T turnaround on Hilltop. Uh, other things I've done are actually utilize the, um, that particular residential driveway, I've widened it to 16 to 18 feet wide and granted an easement to the town and essentially the emergency services uh, personnel that can utilize the actual driveway itself after the event that they're responding to is um, completed, I guess, not be the best word, but I guess it gets the point across. Um, and and they've, they're able to utilize that actual driveway as part of a turnaround. So those are the, the few different um, approaches I've taken in the past. Um, it's uh, certainly uh, at the board's discretion and possibly even a discussion with emergency management services to see what kind of input and preference they may, they may have. We certainly could get in touch with the Monroe Joint Fire District and have a discussion with them. So looking, looking at that, am I, Am I seeing it correctly where um, St. George's in Hilltop, that kind of T? 
Correct. is correct. There's right. no improvement on Hilltop whatsoever. There is a gravel road on St. George's. St. Right. Yeah. And so, but and then St. George's just dead ends up there as you go past that intersection. Um, truthfully, I would have to do the site visit myself. We only surveyed this area that was required for this particular um, portion of the development. I didn't think we would need to go any further than that. Um, I think I could solve any issues we have within this area, so um, I, I, I couldn't comment correctly on that. Yeah, it only looks like it's a lot away, right, from from what I'm looking at. And then yeah, I think the vicinity map yeah. doesn't show it really going anywhere beyond right. it. There's nowhere yeah. for it to connect to in that direction, right? I don't, just get, I, the, the main road is Prospect that it comes in off of. Correct. Um, correct. If you look at if you look at the location map on the front sheet, uh, left hand side, it does look like St. George's ultimately connects to Lake Avenue. But I don't believe it may be graveled all the way through to Lake Avenue. I, but I don't think it actually connects to it. It doesn't connect to it. It just may be graveled, but oh, it, okay. it may not. It may be graveled up to the point of connection, but it's certainly not a um, traveled way. If, if it's going through there, it would be obviously going through there illegally to, to Lake Avenue. Correct. Um, so hill, hilltop is gravel, or hilltop is paved. Hilltop is completely vacant. There's nothing on it. If you look nothing. at the existing conditions map, there's just contours there. Just like a paper street. Yeah. It's, a, it's a paper road, correct. So St. George's is the one that's graveled. Hilltop has no surface. It's just uh, trees and grass. I'm, I'm going to ask you to repeat yourself because of all the, the crinkling paper. Sure. Here as we were folding the maps, as when Dave, you asked the question, did you say that there was a possibility of improving St. George Avenue? Yeah, I think it would be uh, beneficial to both the applicant um, and the town if St. George's was improved. So if you take a look at um, the, the, the southerly most adjacent parcel, that would be section block and lot 11C18. It's... Um, You'll see that the you'll see that prospect has kind of been improved almost to the end of that property. Um, it looks like there's a uh, asphalt road in that location, so just about to where our property line begins a little bit before it would make sense for the applicant to um, continue that asphalt road at least through their entire frontage of their property, and somewhere along the way of their frontage. Um, and possibly even encroaching into Hilltop a little bit, we could probably prepare a, uh, an adequate fire truck turnaround so that emergency management vehicles can uh, safely access um, the site. Um, we can, and again, we can coordinate that with the fire district. We'll set up a meeting as I've done before and make sure that they feel that it's an adequate approach. Yeah, I think it would be appropriate. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like appropriate. Uh, to look at, you know, consult with fire, maybe get to the emergency management and to the, you know, the town engineer and just hook up on all these issues and work on it with them, Would, uh, right, uh, to, to you have a yeah. collective set of recommendations to the board, yeah, right? That's fine. And I'm getting way ahead of things here, but would that be something that if this was approved that we can have that as a stipulation? Certainly, right. yeah. Yeah. That's what you would do. Right. If it got to an approval, it would be right. conditioned Based, upon yeah. each of these things that yep. the fire and the yep. engineer and everybody has agreed on. Hopefully there's agreement with the applicant and there's a plan right. that's been developed that everybody agrees is safe and efficient and appropriate. We would take no exception. Do you have any, I, I see the plan, single family home, that's good. Do you, do you have any building plans? Not, well, actually, yes. They, I believe full architectural plans were submitted to the building department because we have a denial letter from them. Right, right. So I believe if you, we could probably submit those to the ZBA if you wish. Yeah. yeah. We can do that. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. We try to remain as consistent as we can on this board, and it's something that we we ask for almost every applicant, yeah, just get a feel yeah, for we that. Can, we can provide that next submittal. 
Okay, great. Any other comments, questions? You said you'd. Yeah, um, let me search my files, and uh, next time we come back before the board, I'll, I'll tell you the exact locations. One was Catskill Avenue, um, towards the end of it, um, and there was like a few others. I forget the other ones because they well over 10 years ago probably at this point but um i think I, there I, was some more recently i, I just have this vague you memory might have, you might have been on the board for the yeah. very last one i did it was for it was for paul edwards um but it was a completely different board at that time if i recall correctly yeah Anybody not here? not that one that was yeah, you might yeah. uh, i don't remember this that, that been might have years. been the one that might have been the one on catskill avenue <coughs> that i did and so essentially what we did there was uh, it's not fully comparing apples to apples but we, we essentially improved Catskill Avenue through the frontage of our property and provided a turnaround and we made sure that we had adequate, in that particular case, we had um, swales on either side of the road. So we just did some drainage improvements to make sure that water could flow correctly. Um, and it would look like we would do something similar here. Again, that was three years ago. I mean. So, so from the first one I ever did, my understanding, this is just, I think, a collective um, uh, set of, a, a collective set of checklist points that the ZBA has accumulated over the years um, in terms of how they've approved plans. I mean, there's quite a few 280A variances, actually quite in a lot of towns, and there's quite a few in Monroe, because we have a lot of old bungalow areas that are private roads that were never improved. So I couldn't tell you like exactly um, the st how the standards were developed other than I think it was over a, a good course or a period of time that the ZBA has accumulated this knowledge and I guess kind of passed it down. It, it would make sense though, just looking at what you have here, you have unimproved roads. Um, you know, emergency management services is certainly an important issue to make sure that we can get them to um, the site in case of an emergency. So, and to make sure that if we're improving roads, um, and adding additional impervious surface that we make sure we take a look at drainage issues and that we don't have any negative impacts on them. So it's probably, I think, a bit of experience of the ZBA over the years, plus just, I think, common engineering sense of, of how to develop a plan to make sure that we provide proper access and maintain proper drainage. So in the past, there's, um, I'd have to look at that as well. Uh, I, th I can't remember the last time I did one of these, 2016, 17, 18, somewhere in, in that range. I'll, I'll double check. Um, there's going to be a homeowners association in this particular area. Um, they all do share in the cost of the maintenance. Um, and as a part of what we provide to the ZBA, there has to be some type of, um, I don't know, documentation, some type of instrument that we would provide that would also allow this particular applicant to be included in that, any fees that are associated with that. Just to myself 100%, this remains a private road. It does. Afterwards. Correct. Yes. And, uh, you submitted anything that shows what the ownership rights are along St. George's, like who owns that strip and what's your right to use it, et cetera? I have the deed, and I can certainly provide that uh, for the next meeting. Is it as simple, or are you um, moving forward to extend where you where you have paved and where it's gravel, and, and you're gonna you're gonna coordinate with the the people that you need to coordinate, but. It, it sounded just as simple as that you'd need to show a grading plan, right? All, all that all that type of, or you're not because it's a private road. You know what I mean? You just can't go in and, and pave that gravel, and if it's not going to drain correctly or anything of that nature, you're going to have to show some type of grading plan, road plan. Certainly. I, th I think what, you know, the, the process that will be followed is that the applicant's going to get together and we sh with the various professionals and um, whether it's emergency management, fire, but also the engineer, maybe the town, have the town engineer look at it and basically engineer from the ground up what that entrance is going to look like 
from prospect all the way back to as far back as it needs to, to make sure that it's, you know, again, safe, structurally uh, intact, not going to create drainage problems. Right. It's pitched correctly. It drains right. It's it's safe for people to access, and uh, it's safe for emergency ingress and egress uh, in case of emergency. All all of that all will that, be yeah. done, and all th this is not going to be just hey, yeah, you pr pay. you promise to work it out with those people. Th it'll be worked out as part as the applicant is before the board. Yeah. He will be yep, that's consulting with them and bringing us plans to look at and say this is what we're agreeing on and this is what this is where decisions may be need to be made or not right i mean that's, that's correct yeah. I, I i don't recall i i I'll, I'll i'll preface this by saying i take no exception if the town engineer gets involved in the review i don't believe they did in any of the previous uh, applications i did um, it's on it's on me my license is on the plan so i need to make sure that if i design this that emergency management vehicles can you know they can access the site um, and I got to make sure that, like, for instance, if you look at my grading plan, I have a culvert underneath the driveway to make sure I can pass water from one side of the driveway through to the other. Um, you know, I would add some riprap at the end of that culvert to make sure that I slow the water down a little bit and it doesn't have too much velocity. I mean, these are the things and uh, uh, and items I would take a deeper look at. This is, um, you know, first appearance before yep. the board, and I figured it would be a good meeting to kind of. Oh, the drainage is an issue. Yeah. In that specific area. I'm, I'm aware of that. It's, just, yeah. it's, it's, it's an issue everywhere up in this Yeah, area. yeah. That um, and, and so we've always made sure to provide for proper culvert crossings. Um, we even have riprap lined um, the ditches a little bit further than normally to make sure that we don't have any erosion issues. We have placed check dams inside those uh, drainage ditches to just slow the velocity Holding of the down. water down a little bit. So we can certainly do all those, those things. That's not an issue. On the issue of the water, it's, you said there's going to be a sewer connection, correct? Correct. Do you know what sewer district that is? We are in Moodna. And is that connection available? Moodna is in a moratorium right now. Right. So we would be seeking to get a 288 variance, um, and we would still need to wait until we were able to make a connection to, to Moodna once that um, capacity is available. I think as far as the property size, right, you're under an acre and then you have an issue as far as if you can't get a connection, then a septic. So we looked at that as well. Um, we have mapped the wells. You don't see it on this plan. Um, it was done subsequent to this one. So we did map all the wells um, along the properties that are to the south of us. Um, there's, n I have to take a harder look at it. There's not that much room left over for a septic system when I have to maintain my separation distances to neighboring wells. I'm not saying to you, I can't do it. I'm saying to you, it may make more sense for the applicant to wait until <laughs> capacity is available in Moodna. Uh, I will discuss that with the applicant and see if they want to propose a septic system at this time, if we can design one. Um, and then later on when uh, capacity is available with Moodna, they could connect if they choose to do so. Um, but at this point in time right now, I think we're just looking for the 288 variance, and then we would deal with sewage disposal as a matter of dealing with the building department. Yeah, that, that's completely up to them, right? It's Correct, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if the applicant would want to wait, yeah. um, or if they may be interested in pursuing a septic system right now, but either way, it's, 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 we're encumbered to provide that information to the building department for the building permit. I think we've given each other enough to think about here. And uh, what, just to recap, what we like to see is the, is the plans for the, for the dwelling, yep. just to get a feel for yep. what's there. Uh, we'll, we'll be, before the next meeting, We'll get out and uh, visit the area. We'll get a. I apologize that I didn't get out there before this meeting. Um, you have the permission. I believe we signed um, whatever forms are required in the application. Right. Yeah. Any other comment? I think at this point right now. Um, I need to probably go back and discuss with the applicant for sure the way they want to move forward. 
um, and uh, we can improve the plans based on uh, the information that we spoke about tonight. Uh, maybe I have a meeting with Monroe Joint Fire District and get some of that stuff going. And hopefully I, at the next meeting I come back to, we'll have some additional information on the plans that maybe the board could uh, at that point make a take a consideration for scheduling a public hearing. Oh, okay, if there's uh, no other questions, no other comments, this is just um, step one of a few steps. That's correct. Yeah. Right? That's correct. <coughs> thank you. All right, thank you for your time, Ty. Have a good night. Uh, the faster you can get us, <clears throat> excuse me, the faster you can get us everything, the less steps there'll be. I'll, I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Take Thanks, care. Mike. Have a good night. Mike is on. I don't want them rolled. Thank you. Barely fold maps that have been folded already. Let's start a new fold. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, next up, a uh, new project, Luciano. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good evening. Is this on? Yeah, it should be. Just, just lean into it. Okay. Your name? Nelson Luciano. So here, here's another, do you care to give us a, a recap of what, what you want to accomplish here? Because if I remember correctly, this has been hanging around for a little bit. Yes? Yes, the submission was in August. Yes. Right. Yes. So what, what, what do you got for us tonight? So basically, I have a pool and a gazebo on my, technically my side yard. Um, my house is 78 Cromwell Hill Road, but my front entrance faces Park Terrace. So technically that would be my side entrance, even though it's my front. I don't have a backyard. I have maybe 15 feet in the back. Um, so for my kids and uh, for my family, I put a, uh, a pool. I uh, wasn't aware that it wasn't gonna fit I got a little ahead of myself. I think um, I'm under about 19 feet. It's supposed to be 40 feet from the property line. I'm at 20. Um, the gazebo is off by 15 feet also. And um, um, my neighbors are okay with it. I, I got letters here from my neighbors. They're my neighbor to the left, my neighbor to the right. There's no problem with uh, me having, a, for them, me having a gazebo or a pool. Um, I just don't have any space. I thought I had enough space. So the pool is new. When did you do the pool? The pool um, was last year. Last year. You were before in front of us be previously. Yes. That wasn't last year, though. No, that was uh, a couple of years ago. A few years ago. Yeah. Same lot, same same yeah. home. Mm -hmm. You remember that? What, that was there was there? a pool then, wasn't there? Yeah, that was a large oval pool. Okay. About thirty-two feet. I took that down. I think there was a, an issue with having a pool in the front yard. Yeah. So you have the pool you have now is oval or round? I'm sorry, it's oval now. Is yeah, I was going to say because yeah. it shows oval on the the yeah. survey. It's oval now. It was round before. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it's basically in my front yard. Uh, but my front yard is the biggest piece of property, the biggest land that I have right now. It's in the front. Um, that's why technically I said it was my side yard because it faces Park Terrace, but my address is Cromwell Hill Road. I re remember that the, one of the bigger problems was all. 
Right. Yes, the lot coverage is supposed to be 25%. I'm at 43, I believe. I'm over by 23.2%. 48.2 as built survey. So did you, when you tore down your round pool and put in the above ground oval pool about a year or so ago, did you get a permit? No, I, I, was, I wasn't in town. I had the pool. I purchased the pool. And um, when I came back, there was a discrepancy. And I had hired somebody to put it on, but I, I wanted to wait for the permit. There was a discrepancy with my wife and everything else. And I came back, and it was already installed. So I went into town, and I eventually applied for the permit, and I got denied. Um, I looked at SR10 where it said a corner lot, the pool would have to be 25 feet from the property line. My old um, survey said SR10. Um, I don't know how it switched to SR15, but Ben told me that it's a SR15 now. I spoke to the surveyor from years ago before I purchased the house, and he told me, uh, oh, you should be grandfathered in, and I went back to Ben. We went back and forth, but um, I guess there is no grandfathering in. I'm SR15 now which makes it 40 feet from the property line. Grandfather, I think, would be pre-existing non-conforming if it was installed right. before, yeah, before it was switched over. Yeah. That would be pre-existing non-conforming or grandfathering as you're putting it. Aside from the pool, the, are these other issues still open as well? The fence on yes. the right of way? The gazebo. The shed. And the shed, correct. Is still uh, an issue as well? Yes. So I was uh, applying for a variance for the gazebo and the shed and the fence. And the pool now? Correct. When they didn't give you a stop work order on this pool that made you, that made you go to the town? Was, no. Was there... Complaints from the neighbors that that set that off, or what prompted this? Yeah, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I just. I mean, were you issued a violation from the building department? Is that what prompted it, or what um, what brought you here tonight to? Yes, a violation from the building department, correct. But I had no complaints from neighbors. That no neighbors told me they complained at all. That you're aware of. That I'm aware of. So the gazebo is that new? Um, the gazebo has been there for some time. I, it's been there since the round pool was there. Same with the shed? No, the shed, uh, it was just this summer I put it up. Fence came with the pool? No, the fence has been there since I moved in 2007. I'm sorry, what did you say about the shed? The shed was, Shed's it's new. been there or? It's no, the shed I just new. put it up this it, summer. The, the only, the, the only, the only comment I would have here, and this is just me, if you, if you knew that your gazebo was in question, right? Mm -hmm. And your and you're going ahead and you put the shed in about a year ago or so? The shed this past summer. Right. And you're, you would know that your shed is closer to the line than your gazebos were. You, you, you have a problem with your gazebo with their offsets, right? Yes. And it's been like that for a while. Mm -hmm. You have a problem with the pool and the offset. And I don't know if, there was a, if, the, if the round pool was still up. Would that have still been in violation? And lock coverage. And, and lock coverage. And then with all that that you knew, you went ahead and you put a shed up that is 4.2 feet off of the line. Does it have, what's the, uh, I don't know the uh, boundaries for the shed. Excuse me? The shed, what, what's the... Uh it says that the shed, your shed is 4.2 feet off the property line. And what should it be? 
Does he have it marked down as the shed being? Accessory shed. structures has to be about yeah. five feet. Five feet, yeah. Right, five you're, feet. You're point eight feet off. Yeah. On the and, shed. And it's also the uh, separation from the primary dwelling. Right. It's it's there for fire safety purposes, I think, and but per the zoning code, it needs to be at least seven feet, I think. When, when right? I bought the house, it was a shed in the exact same spot, but it was up against the house, and it came with the house. All I did was the shed was riding out, just took it out and put another one on there, but I just separated from the house. I wasn't aware that it couldn't be against or I didn't know the Actually, there's two sheds, correct? I'm sorry? Two sheds? No, it's just one shed. You have one shed that's 4.2 feet from the east property line, and it says here shed is only three feet from the dwell. Okay. So same shed same in question. Shed. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. If you do a, a drive, a site drive by, you'll see the back of the house is really abutted up against the new, the, the next property. And now the fence. The fence just blows it away. Your 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 fence is in into the radius. Is it saying is in I don't see on this survey how far how far over the property line the fence is. It just says it's in the right of way. Right. It's not, but it's, it's, your property line, it's built outside of your, what the property that you own or it's on property you own, but that is a right of way owned by the town. I, I no, don't know I, the answer to that. It, it looks like to me from this survey, it, you know, um, it looks like to me it's well over his property line. Sorry, it looks like it's on yeah, the neighbor's. No, I was looking at that wrong. It looks like it's. Yeah, you you were just showing it. Yeah, yeah. It, no, it's, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah, it's well it's well over his property line, on. Uh, yeah, on, on Park Terrace on Cromwell Hill, you know that intersection, the radius. So that that's a. Uh, and like I said, I just didn't see the distance. It, it looks yeah. like it looks like it's a good five feet. I'm just guessing here. In in some spots, five feet. Pretty, pretty much through the radius, through the apex of all that. Um, pretty much everything on Cromwell. Yep. And everything on Park Terrace. Yep. I mean, I, I don't like if it's if it's constructed. Outside of the property that's line, not even and on town property, that's I don't. That's not a. That's not an issue for the zoning board. The zoning board can't give away town property. That's what you're basically asking the town to do. I mean, that's what you're asking the board to do. But you've built something on town property, as near as I can tell from the survey. You can't get relief from a zoning board to let you just take town property because basically what you've done, you're basically you've commandeered town property. That's what it looks like to me. Right? Am I, is it, no, am I reading it right? No, 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 no. You're, you're reading it right. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. But do yeah. you see it? <laughs> Unless I, I see the lot area issue, the front yard, and the lot coverage. Do you see anything in this? Um, anything about the fence in this package? Yeah. I, I see Ben's letter. Yeah, I see his, his letter. letter right. But I'm, I'm trying to. Right. I don't see. In terms of what's being applied for, is the. Oh, here it is. I, I got it. It's uh, on, on the first page under B. Fences in a right of way not permitted shall be removed or reinstalled inside the property. Yeah. Yep.
Yeah, so that, that's, just, uh, that's just something that has to be done. Yeah, there's no way. Do you have any plans on doing that? I do now. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, that's. So there's no, I can't apply for various. But, the, but Ben. There's defense. nothing to variance. It's okay. not your property. Gotcha. You, you got this in August, right? <coughs> from, this from Ben? Yes. From the, from the building inspector? Yes. Right. So from August to now, you, you, like when I said, are you planning on doing anything about the fence? You said, I am now. Yeah. But how about in August when you got this and you saw all the, the three violations and him saying that this fence has got to be removed? I assumed, and I guess I assumed wrong, that I could apply for a variance for the fence. Yeah, but, no. Yeah. Yeah, the, the only relief that the zoning board can make is if there's a practical difficulty caused by a part of the zoning code, right? That, that's, that's what the zoning board can do. It can vary the requirements of, a, of the zoning code. It can't alter property rights, you know, in terms of who owns what and who's allowed to build outside your property line. Like the same way, like we couldn't give, the board couldn't give permission for you to build on your neighbor's property. You'd have, that's between you and your neighbor. If, you're, if your fence went over your line and was onto your neighbor, you couldn't come to the town and say, give me a variance to let me build my fence on my neighbor's property. You'd have to work that out with your neighbor gotcha. and, you know, that's between them. This board is part of the town. The town, it looks to me, I, th I think, I'm assuming this is town, these are town roads, right? These are not, are these? This Cromwell is, is certainly. Yes, Cromwell is. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about so Park those Terrace. Are, so those right. are ownership rights. If the town owns that property, then the, the board, the zoning board can't give you relief from that. That's something that you either have to go and approach the town board uh, as the, it's the only thing that you could do other than take it down and, you know, be prosecuted for, you know, you know, in the justice court uh, or otherwise for that. What about Park Terrace being a private road? Is that uh, town road also or is that, how does that work? Can it do a variance on the Park Terrace side? Say that one more time. The park terrace side where the fence is on, is that, uh, it's a private road, so is that considered also town road or? Well, that's, you know, I, the, a private road is typically, uh, it's going to be owned by someone, not the town. So those are private property rights that whoever, whoever owns the rights to park terrace, whether it's you, do you have a right of way over it? Are there other people that have the right of passage over park terrace? That's, you know, that's. Uh, it's like the example that I gave you if you build a fence onto your neighbor's property. Park Terrace, you probably have some rights in your deed to pass over it, but I would be very surprised if you had rights in your deed to build a fence on it, right? But that's, but that's not for this board. This board can't get involved in those private property, you know, rights. They couldn't give you, this board couldn't give you the right to build a fence on, a, you know, a private road. That's not... That's not within this board's purview. Okay. Should I get a lawyer to help me with this or a surveyor or somebody to, I don't really understand all these zoning codes and everything. Surveyor. Surveyor, where did you get, where did you get the map from? Where'd from you get the uh, surveyor, uh, Paul Rokeman. Right. So you, you have a surveyor, right? What, this was done in June First. of 23, right? Yeah. So you, you, you have a surveyor. Um, you know we're not we're not here for for advice uh, on how how you should handle this. But how, how long have you been at this property? I've been there sixteen years. Sixteen years. So did did you put the fence in? Uh, no, the fence was there when and what? Actually, no, my cousin put it there. Yeah. I went away. I was away out overseas so, without a permit. I wasn't aware no, you needed a permit. Do you no. need a permit for a fence? Yeah. Well, permit have, for everything. Ha, have you read this? Have you, have you read the, the, from the building inspector in August and yeah. why you're here? Yeah. Right? I, it's, I it says it all right here. It says, uh, the fence on the right of way is not permitted, shall be removed, and reinstalled inside the property line. Yeah, I figured it's just not permitted because it went past the line. I didn't realize it means permit, a permit. Yeah. Sorry have gotten a permit yeah they would have told you where you can and can't put the fence yeah if you went for a permit they would have said well 
you can put up the fence, no problem. Yeah. Just not there. Okay. You got to put it onto your property line. Okay. <laughs> We got the, we got the, we talked about the fence. We went over the um, front the yard, lot coverage. Uh, what's the other, what's uh, lot area covered, lot coverage? Words. <clears throat> All right, any, any, any other comments here that, that we may have missed during this discussion? We're essentially just here for the lot coverage, correct? The fence is out of our jurisdiction at this yeah, point? Yeah, the, the fence is just something that is yeah. right, just so egregious that he's been told to take down, uh, either take it down or, or move it to, to the line, but... We're here for the lot coverage and the, the uh, setbacks. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, can I ask you a question? What exactly does lot coverage mean? What, what, what's the... Uh... It's how many you have on your property. So like a driveway, a house itself, the pool, it's area that, you know, the water can't travel through. So essentially you have... 50% or 48.2% of your property covered in, you know, impermeable services. So you can only have 25%. So you're kind of 23% oh. over there. So it's a lot. Um, and I'm just looking at how we could figure that out. We, we did go through this yeah. the first time you were here. Yeah, yeah. but I, I didn't understand exactly. That's as, understandable. As far as, I mean, the house is, it's a house. I mean, it was built there. Oh, I yeah. bought it. It was there. And the rest of the, I have 12 trees in the front. They grow just perfectly fine. The grass grows great. I know. It's, it becomes a, an issue with, you know, if we let you have 50%, then everybody else can have 50%, and then it becomes, you know, we've just changed the rule in or general. Or it doesn't go anywhere. Or to maintain consistent. And when it rains, as a storm. The water just doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> okay. And some and towns have different coverage lots, you know, allowed, but this is what Monroe has, 25%. Okay. So Try to be very consistent here. So, you know, if, if we let somebody do it, then... You have to let everybody do it. Yeah. Tricky because people out of town or from the city where you're allowed to have, you know, more lot coverage. But up here, they only let you have 25%. So I'm trying to make sure what we could do to get to 25%. Stone area, what, what exactly is that? It's just uh, rocks. I just put <laughs> a bunch of rocks and some uh, fire pit and chairs around it. It's, it's just pebbles, loose rock. So it so rocks. Is it like gravel or it's about pavers? The size. Okay. Little okay. pebbles. Yeah. Okay. rock. So yeah. Yeah. if I'm, I'm going through Ben's letter and I'm trying to make notes on the variances that are, that are being applied for, the, you know, there's the issue of the fence that we've talked about, which is not within the board's jurisdiction. So that's not something that the board could accept and, and pass upon. Um, then this is what I see. In regard to the shed, all right, it looks like there's three variances necessary for the shed. There's, it's, it's 4.2 feet from the property line. Right. It needs to be five. We'll put a um, house. There's, there's, it's too close to the house. Right. And it also violates the front yard as measured from Cromwell by two feet. There's 38 feet, but 40 feet are required. Right. Okay, so that's the shed. The second thing that I see is overall lot area, which is completely pre-existing, right. non-conforming. We just can't do anything about the lot area. He's not doing anything, but the lot area is, is, right. is too low. Right, because it's uh, yeah. 15 um, and he's got about not just under 10,000 square feet, right? Right. In regard to the pool, um, there's a front yard on both sides, Cromwell and Park. Right, it, it violates on both sides. If I'm, if I'm reading Ben's letter right. Yes. Okay. Um, the gazebo is the same thing. It violates yep. on both sides on Cromwell and Park on right. the front yard. 
So both of the, on the pool, that's two front yard variances, and on the gazebo, that's two front yard variances. And then the lot coverage, which is 48.2, um, uh, where 25% is permitted. That, okay. That's what I see as the variances that are being applied for, that, that you would have jurisdiction over. Yep. So, uh, procedurally, um, is there anything further that you'd want to hear or see or receive from the applicant, um, you know, before scheduling it for a public hearing? Not at all. I, okay. I think we have everything. We have everything. I was just, uh, the, the applicant asked, should he have a surveyor or a lawyer? Um, and again, we're not in the business of giving advice or any, anything, but, you know, maybe talk to your surveyor. Because if you're having a problem understanding this, maybe he'll have, he can explain it to you. Yeah, that would be, and that's why I said earlier, surveyor. But you, you have a surveyor. Okay. Right. Right. As you sure. said, you're not familiar, so your surveyor would be the best person to be able to explain these things to you. So what would be the next step here? I heard you mention uh, to a public hearing. What, what exactly? I thought this was a public hearing. No. no. You're just, this is a new project in front of this board just to get information, exchange information on, on what you're trying to do here with the packet that's been given to us. And it's just an information going back and forth to see everyone's understanding of what you're trying to do here. Um, and at, at this point, I don't, you know, if you're going to go and, and seek out a surveyor to, to talk with them, uh, I, I would even, I, at this point, I, I don't know if I feel comfortable even s setting a, um, a public hearing unless there's, if, you're, if there's more information that you think you can give us that will help you out or make us understand anything more, if not, then is there anything that you, you like you, you were, you're, you're, a lot of your answers to us is I didn't understand, I thought, you know, I, I didn't know defense needed a permit, all, all, that, all that kind of stuff. So if you feel comfortable with everything that you've given us here to move forward, then you know this is what we're gonna be judging everything on. Um, I do have one question. The deck that's on the pool, that's one permit, right? The pool and the deck, correct? No. It's together? The deck, you gotta get a permit for the deck? You got to get a permit for the pool. It's it's just odd that the deck is. He doesn't have anything on the deck here. How could I, he? I, it clearly doesn't meet the. How, how could how could we have an offset problem on on the pool? There should be something the there because it, it might. But the gazebo, the gazebo is noted. No, because uh, yeah, but the wooden deck. That's what I'm saying. And the gazebo. The yeah. Yeah. The deck, it might be again. I I don't know how. I don't remember how your code works. Some codes will, if it's not covered. Some codes will not count. Uh, well, the town spacing, inspector told me yeah, they go together. If it's not covered, it doesn't affect lot coverage. Right. How old is the deck? Back. When did you put the deck on? At the same time the pool came on last yeah, year. But the town inspector told me they go together. And that's why when I filled out the application, he goes there together. And he charged me together, uh, whatever the cost was. And he said they're together. Yeah, I, you know, as far as I know, and and I could be mistaken, but check with the check with the building inspector, the building department. Uh, I believe that you need uh, a permit for your deck and a separate permit for your pool. Um, I would well, review. You don't technically need a deck. I'm not saying you shouldn't have one, but I, that's why they're separate. I would you can have an above ground pool that just has a ladder that goes from the ground and up over it. So they're they're two separate. They're not connected. I would re-review your permit application for the pool that you submitted, see if there's language on there for, in fact, the deck, and if not, uh, consult with the building department on that. So is the deck considered, all right, the lot coverage, water could still get through the deck 
and go into the ground underneath it. So is that part of the lot coverage consideration or how does that work? No, I don't, I think, I think you said it before, I think it's a covered deck. It's a co yeah, so no, but it, but it is, it is close to the property line. Right, that's the other issue as that's, well. That's, right. that's a is, big yeah, issue. Okay. If it doesn't, it may not count for lot coverage purposes. But you're right but on it, the property but, line. I, but I think in the past we've seen that yeah. Ben will interpret it to account for setback purposes, right? Right. Oh yeah, setback. It's it's there. Right. So I'm. Not, but I don't see that in Ben's letter. No. No, um, I don't. I don't see any of it. That, that's why it just struck as we were speaking. As I looked down, I was like, "Well, the deck is sitting right there." But then, then there's a whole. Uh, it, I'm. I'm 99% sure you need it because, you know, when you when you get the deck, you have the footing inspection. Yeah. You have you have all that, but plus your deck is connected to your pool. Is There's it? A, well, I'm only going by. Here. I don't think I don't think it's actually connected to the pool. But it abuts up too. against it. It abuts it. It abuts too, but it's not connected. But it abuts too. No, but okay. It, but that's it's, why I think it's too separate. Yeah, it's separate. With, yeah. Look, look at the picture. Mm -hmm. the, the point I'm making, there's a huge safety issue there, yeah, too, yeah. because you that's why you need it, because you would have to have certain locking devices, yeah. gate, right. uh, lockable gates with alarms. I, in, I have a lockable yeah, gate. And then do you have, you know, once someone's on a deck, do you have a rail between the deck and a pool? Yes. Yeah, I, I yeah so, through your so those things need to be, that's why you need to have the permit for the deck also. Uh, I think I would talk to Ben, uh, the building inspector, but I don't know if we're overstepping here. Like because I said, if, if you're not sure, review your permit application that you did file for the pool, see if there is mention of the deck on it, otherwise confer with the building department on that. All right, so I'll confirm with Ben, but I'm pretty sure he said they go together. Well, when, the, you know, better off not I assuming because of the situation that we're dealing with right now, I would uh, get a definitive answer on that. Answer, you, you seemed a little confused before, you thought this was a public hearing. Um, for it to be public, the public actually has to be notified. Your neighbors will be notified about it. Okay. So they have the opportunity to come down and speak for or against or whatever, but your neighbors will actually be notified about it. That's why it's referred to as a public hearing. Okay. And then if, if you, you've heard, you were here the whole time tonight? Yes. You'd hear us say during the public hearing, does anybody want to speak? That's why I thought it was Yeah, but everybody, hearing. yeah, but those were public hearings. Okay, but mine isn't. A this is not a public hearing. Okay. Uh, not at this time. Yeah, okay. not at this time. I got you. All right, if there if there's no other no other comments or questions, uh, like I said before, at this point I don't feel comfortable uh, even scheduling a, a public hearing at this time. Uh, I, I don't know if it would be up to up to us to ask Ben about the deck or up to the applicant. I, I think I, I got a suggestion, right, and and just sort of an observation. I think when we're talking about the deck, we're talking about it in the context of, look, you have an application before this board, and then we have to figure out what's the, what's the relief that the board can grant, right? We've talked about we can't grant relief on the fence, and we're identifying the different things that you need relief from the code on, the things that I just went down. And what the board is, and, and once, we've, once we're comfortable with that, then the board will schedule a public hearing. And the public hearing notice will list each of the variances that you're asking for. And by law, the public has to be told these are the variances that are being applied for. So the issue with the deck is one where the board is simply saying, look, it, it might be that you also need a variance for the deck. And it would make sense. If you do, let's know that now. And then let's notice all of it at once. Yeah, you want it all done at once. You don't want to. You don't want to have somebody say, "Oh shoot, I forgot the deck." You do need a variance for the deck. All of a sudden, you have to come back here, right? Again, so, go through the whole process. So, <laughs> g given everything that we've talked about, I, I think what uh, the chairman is saying is, why don't why don't we put it back on for another appearance 
next month, but not a public hearing yet. And in the meantime, let's find out from Ben, either, you know, both, maybe you go and talk to Ben, and maybe Noreen, you can grab Ben and say, look, an issue came up about the deck on the separation. Is the deck, is the deck in compliance as it, as it relates to the front yard setbacks, or is that an additional variance that's gonna be required? And whatever Ben says, Ben says. If he says, no, you need variances, then you come back, you amend your application to include that, come back, and then that's included. If Ben says no, for the following reasons, then it's not gonna be before this board. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. We have no minutes to go over, correct? Okay. So uh, I think that concludes our agenda. Uh, at this point, I'd like to make a motion to close uh, the ZBA meeting. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.